Lord is good and he is worthy, worthy to be praised. And we certainly thank God for you on tonight joining us for our Bible study. Amen. We have had a whole month off. Amen. The, uh, the month of December. And we thank God for us having time to spend with our families. But we're going to get ready to go right into the word of the Lord on tonight. We're going into the book of Matthew, St. Matthew. Amen. St. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read in your hearing verse 33 through 34. But well, when you get a chance, I want you to read verses 25 through 34. Amen. But these are our foundation scriptures. Verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That 34th verse says, Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow should take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And let me just read that 33rd verse again. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And on tonight, <clears throat> This first month of the new year, I want to talk about setting right priorities. Setting right priorities. Now, we as the people of God, we must learn to set the right priorities in our lives if we expect to experience God's best. You got to have some priority. You got to have some order in your life if you want to experience the Lord's best. But some of us, so many of us are lacking setting priorities. And we have today, it is the inability or the unwillingness to set the right priorities. We set priority, but we don't do the right priorities for our lives. And what do you mean, Pastor? Most of us, I would say at least 80, 85% of us are reactionary, reactionaries, meaning we simply react to everything that happens. We do our best to work out then by reacting to everything that happens, whether it's good or bad. We find ourselves in some tough and sticky situations where we find ourselves that we got to work ourselves a loose. So we don't want to be reactionary saints. What, what, what's the other kind of Christian that we can be? We can be proactive. Proactive believers are those who prepare their hearts and their minds ahead of time for the trials that they know is surely coming. While things are going well with you, you're praying, you're fasting, you're reading the word of God. So what are you doing there? You are being proactive. You are preparing yourself for the storms that will eventually come. It should not take us by surprise because we know that storms and disruptions in life is going to happen. So as a proactive person, it means that I got to prepare my heart. Glory to God. I got to get in the word of the Lord. I got to prepare my mind. What I'm talking about in my mind, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. There's nothing too hard that God cannot move on my behalf. So you prepare your hearts and mind ahead of time because trials and tests will surely come. And when we, by preparing our hearts and mind, we are being proactive and therefore we learn to set proper priorities in our lives. Now, my question to you tonight is, how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? And let's be honest. Are you reactive or are you proactive? Do you find yourself always reacting to issues? Or do you plan ahead by preparing yourself through prayer and fasting prior to the storms of life? Let's be honest. Look at your life. Look how you respond. Are you reacting? When you could have prayed, you didn't pray. You were taking a nap. 
when you could have got into the word of God, you didn't do it. When you could have got online for Bible study because there was something that you needed to hear that will help you on tomorrow that you did not do it. Are you reactive or are you being proactive? Are you planning ahead? Because we know the Bible said, woe unto you, offenses, trouble, storms, situations will come. Stop praying, Lord, take everything away. He's not going to take everything away. Why? Because he needs to build some character in us. As my parents would say, you need, God needs to build some stick. What does stick on me? That I'm going to stand for righteousness regardless. I'm not a wishy-washy say. I don't waver mine. I know the God in whom I serve and whom I believe. As you, you know for yourself, we have seen people who don't spend time in prayer until God forces them in a corner. Then we're going to pray. Then we're going to praise him. Then we're going to give him thanks because we're in a corner now. And while you're in the corner and you start doing it then, because you realize that your only hope lies in prayer unto the Father. Oftentimes we take things for granted, the things of God. When it comes down to the things of God, when it comes down to the things of God, it's that first priority in your life or that's down at the bottom of your list. Hallelujah. Taking God for granted. For example, our parents growing up, you don't realize how much you need your mom and dad when you're a child. Oh, I'd be, I'd be so glad when I get out of this house, when I could get away from my parents, when I could get away from my grandma. Hallelujah, because they're always trying to tell me something. You don't realize the value that they were loading into you until you are gone and you just wish you could have one more conversation with them. One more conversation with them. One more time to go and visit them. You took them for granted. And that's the way some of us are on tonight. We take God and his word for granted. I believe that the apostle Paul had his priorities straight. Paul knew what was the most important things in life were. And that his life was anchored in the important things in life. Well, pastor, what was that? Paul says it was the knowledge he knew he was served, who he was serving. Do you understand and do you really know who you are serving? That coming to church and saying amen and, and lifting your hands is just a habit for you or do you know the God who you are raising your hand to? Do you know the God? Have you met the God? Have you met the Holy Spirit? Paul knew who he was serving. And he knew what the will of God was for his life. Many of us have no clue of what God's will is for our life. When we look at Philippians chapter 1, verses 21, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I live, I'm living for Christ. And if I die, I'm only going to gain. I know some of you right there, you would just lose it. Lord, I don't want to die. But Paul said, if I die, it is gain because I'm living to live again. Glory to God. I'm living to go to my heavenly home. You got to know who you serve, who you serve. Paul was saying that while he was alive, his priority as a saint of God was to serve the Lord. That should be our number one priority. So when Paul died, when he died, he will receive his reward for faithfulness. He will gain his reward for his faithfulness. Question to you who hear my voice on tonight. What are, what are the priorities you have in your own life? Is it to buy another pair of shoes? Is it to buy another outfit? Is it to hang out with your bosom buddies? What priorities have you placed 
in your own life? What's the most important thing to you right now? Answer that question. What is the most important thing to you right now? These questions can be answered by looking at where you spend most of your time and what you are doing with the time that you do have. That's how you answer the question, where do I spend most of my time? Has I put any time to the Lord on today? We're in a brand new year and we want God to do this, 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 and the other. But right now, what are the priorities in your life? You expect God to give it to you and you are not doing your part because the promises of God is yea and amen. Then you have the promise that says that if you would do this, then I'm going to do that. We don't like that if then clause, glory to God. If you will serve me, if you will put me first, hallelujah. If you will seek me first before you seek all this other stuff then all, everything that you need will be added. So what are the priorities in your own life? Too many of us, we are just wasting precious time on life trivialities that have no eternal consequence except to cause you to miss out on God's best. I don't want to miss out on God's best because I'm so involved in just minute stuff, keeping stuff going all the time. And God is not number one in my life. And let me tell you something, saints. Just because you come to church every Sunday doesn't mean that God is number one in your life. What do you do from Sunday at one o'clock until the following Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m.? What have you done? Have you spent any time with the Lord? Have you meditated on his word? Have you talked to the Father? We've got to get our priorities right in 2024. How often do you, during the day, do you stop and think about eternity? How much time do you imagine what heaven would be like? But the picture, have you ever pictured yourself walking down the streets of gold, walking down the streets of Jasper and Ruby? Glory to God. Or are you so involved with this minute stuff, this fleshy stuff, fleshy stuff that will pass away and it will do you no heavenly gain? But I can think about my heavenly home. Hallelujah. This way we sing this song when we all take it to heaven. What a day of rejoicing it would be. You won't have to worry about all this other stuff. Who like you or who don't like you? Who overlook you or who didn't include you in something? As long as the Lord includes me, I'm happy. We talk about going to heaven. We sing about going to heaven. I believe Andre Crouch made said, I'm going up yonder. That was a hit song, song back in the 90s. I'm going up yonder. We preach about going to heaven, but are we really setting the priorities in our life that will prepare us for the journey to make it to heaven? You can't say that I'm going to North Carolina and you don't know how you're gonna get there. You don't know if you're driving, which, which highway they take. No, 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 no. You're certainly not going up north if you don't know where you're going. In the same way, as it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. You got to prepare yourself for the journey. And we all know that mankind has certain priorities and needs that must be met in order to sustain life. Well, what are those needs? We all know that we need food, we need clothing, we need water, and we need shelter. Now, it's not hard for us to set a priority for those things. Why is it that hard? Number one, we can get a job so that we can work and, and buy some groceries so that we can have shelter, food, water, shelter, clothing. So we set priorities there. How many of you have gone to work when you really didn't feel like going to work? You feel it really didn't feel like being, but, but because it was a priority in your life. Because you know that if I don't go, I don't get paid. 
Oh, I hear you, devil. Well, I'm I'm salary. I get sal. I get a salary. Keep on staying out salary or not. You won't get paid. Why? Because you're gonna be outside of the gate. So we prepare, we set priorities for getting food, clothing, water, and shelter. But when we have all of that done, we still don't have time to spend with the Lord. We lose our way and our priorities get out of, out of whack until we find ourselves in trouble. Many of the things that we're going through now is because our life has gotten out of control because we set no spiritual priorities. Let me tell you something. You can't pray and argue at the same time. It just does not work. You can't praise God and be ready to fight at the same time. You can't let the praises of God come out of your mouth and the cuss words come out at the same time. The Bible said bitter and sweet. It don't flow together. So, so clean and unclean. And let me tell you something. I don't care what the world say. I don't care who teaching what. There is a difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. Don't you fool with this mess out here now that everything can go. Oh, holiness has a standard. And I absolutely believe that holiness is right. I don't go along with all this stuff. But what has happened? Because we have not set priorities, the church word, God, people, that we have enemy has muzzled our mouth. Because, you know, I don't want to be put on vowel. I don't want to be vowel. For God, I live. And for God, I'll die. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Some of you need to let your family know that I don't do those things no more. Stop letting them push those buttons. Let me get back to my lesson here. Now, we lose our way and our priorities get out of whack until we find ourselves in trouble. Many believers have their priorities mixed up when it comes to the spiritual food that they need. Why do you say that, Pastor? They love all the programs at the church. We're not doing, we need a program for this, 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 this. They don't miss a chance for a free meal. Glory to God. They don't miss the opportunity to come out and support the prophet, hoping to get a prophecy. They don't miss special services with lots of singing and preaching. They don't miss the opportunity to gather for social activities. Hallelujah. Their priorities are mixed up when it comes to spiritual food, but you can't get them to a regular service, to a regular Bible study, to a prayer service where they can get the real meat from God's word. On Sunday mornings, we, we preach, but we do not get in the real meat. Glory to God. Why? Because he, it has to cover a broad area. Yes, the word of God goes out and does not return to us void, but you get the meat of the word of God doing Bible study, doing prayer time. So we miss our opportunities to get the spiritual food. But oh, are we involved with the meals at the church, the free meals at the church, the programs at the church. We got outreach this and outreach that. But what about Christ? We're reaching out, but we have not set Christ a priority in our lives. And I believe in heaven. <clears throat> Let me stop you thinking right there. I believe in supporting. I believe in working and giving back to our community. But I'm not going to do that to the extent that God has lost priority in my life. Glory to God. We like people like to fill up on junk food. You know how children love junk food. And they want junk food in the church, but they never get any food for their soul. And if you never feed your soul with the word of God, your soul starves to death. And let me stop you right there for those that like to pick things apart. It is good to have all these things in church and to take part in them. There's nothing wrong with the activity night. There's nothing wrong with a church youth lock-in. There's nothing wrong with a church dinner. 
I love the times of fellowship too. But if we never feast on the word of God, when we don't take, and we don't take the time to be fed those things that make us strong spiritually, then our priorities is out of whack and needs some work. If we are going to be strong in the Lord, as Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We stop right there. How many of you all know that you go from day to day, week to week, and you don't eat nothing but, but junk food? That your strength becomes depleted. You understand? Yes, the sugar that you eat is going to give you that sugar rush. Hallelujah. But you know what? It's going to drop you down just like that. But until you can get real food, get you some collard greens, get you some potatoes, my God, get you some baked chicken and eat food that will sustain you. That's the, what's wrong with us now. We feed our bodies with junk. Spiritually and naturally. And Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He taught that in Ephesians 6 and 10. We need to make those things that gives us spiritual strength a higher priority <clears throat> than those things which give us physical strength. I need spiritual strength. You need spiritual strength to travel through this world that we live in now. We all have a burden to carry. Jesus told us that we were to take up the cross and follow him. You're not going to be the one at the back of the train, glory to God. When we turn around, you sitting in the train instead of helping to push the train up the hill. Do you have a burden for working with youth? Do you have a burden for our young people? Do you have a burden for our small children? Because if we don't get the word of God in our babies while they're small, don't think that you're going to wait until they get to be a teenager that you're going to get the word in then. Why? Because they have become assimilated with the word. So we have those who have a burden for working with you, working with small children, working with the men of the church. Let me stop right there, men of the church. Yes, I am a female pastor. Men, we still recognize them as being king and head of the home. Amen. And we, we, we thank God for them. But there's got to be a burden for the men of the church to come together and help other men who are weak. Glory to God. Help them to get to where they need to be in Christ. Then do you have a burden for working with the women of the church? Working with the women of the church. Pulling the women together. God has laid some things on some of your hearts and you haven't done it yet. How long is it going to take? Ooh, glory to God. And you have not done it yet. Do you have a burden for lost souls? Do you have a burden that I want to see souls saved? Do you have a burden for the elderly? Do you take all time out of your busy schedule and just sit with the elderly? Read scriptures with them. Pray with them. Do you have a burden for those who are shut in and can't make it to church because of health problems? All of these can be burdens for Christ. And we should pray that God would give us a heart for the work of the kingdom of God. Lord, give me a heart for the work of the kingdom of God, whether it's working with the elderly, whether it's working with the youth, and when he gives you a heart for that, then you come to the pastor. We ain't having no under pastors. You come to the pastor and the pastor will agree. Yes, go given the green light, you go ahead and do that. Hallelujah. I'm getting all y'all nerves tonight. That's all right. Because if we're going to make it, if we're going to receive better in 2024, we got to set our priorities right. And then when we set the priorities, go through with the priority. We set a whole lot of goals, but the problem is we never attempt to accomplish those goals. We should pray for God to give us a heart for the kingdom, work of the kingdom. But when the work, get this, when the work becomes our priority, 
over our personal relationship with Christ, then not only will the work suffer, but we will find ourselves losing our zeal for the Lord in the process. You, 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 you have a heart for this. And the work becomes your priority over your personal relationship with Christ. Then the work will suffer. Some of us have burdens for those different types of ministries, but it has overwhelmed our personal relationship with Christ. We're busy doing that, but we have not developed a personal relationship with Christ. Luke said in, in chapter 9, 25, for what event, what is a man, what is a man advantage if he gained the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Why is he losing himself? He gained the whole world because he had no relationship. He worked on gaining the world but he has no relationship with the Lord. What good is a work to do for the Lord if we don't know the Lord or his will for our lives? Our priorities, people of God, should be to have a strong relationship with Christ first. A strong relationship with Christ first. We need to make sure that our priorities are right. Then there are those of us who really believe that the priorities are right. And these are the people that believe that I've got my priorities in order. And no one can tell them any different. They are convinced that they are right and everybody else is wrong. Examine yourself. <laughs> They're right. They're more spiritual than everybody else. Right there, you've got in the wrong spirit. The problem is they are basing their priorities on the wrong facts. Satan has blinded them to the truth that just about everything in their whole life is important than being faithful to the work of the Lord. Everything else you do is more important than the work of the Lord. Satan blinded you to the truth. They failed to realize that so many things are weighing them down. You got to understand, I've said before, that every lay aside every sin and the weight, everything is not a uh, sin. They will fail to realize that things are wearing them down just as the cares of life. Then the entertainment that provides an escape from reality. We don't want to face reality. So therefore, we're being entertained with our iPhones. We're being entertained with our Android phones. We're being entertained with our tablets. Glory to God. Entertainment provides an escape from reality. The little sins that are so easily justified are, are covered up. The bad spirit that we have, the terrible attitude that we have, that are visible to everybody else, but not to them. Have you ever, ever met a person that had a bad attitude? Glory to God. They had a terrible attitude. They had a bad spirit. Have you ever met a person that had a bad spirit? But you know what? I don't care what you say. You cannot convince them that they their spirit is wrong and they need to change their attitude. And then in that case, I do like Jesus said, I'm going to shake the dust from my feet and move on. Glory to God. That's what some of us mess up at. We're going to try to make them see. You can't make nobody see nothing when the devil has blinded them. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2 says, Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. What weight are you carrying that has slowed you down from working for the Lord? What weight are you carrying that slowed you down from building your personal relationship with the Lord? And let us run with patience, the race, run with patience. Let me tell you, this life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. My grandson is a sprinter. He can run, sprint. He can run along, but he his best thing is running a sprint, a sprinter. Life is a marathon. 
Mind the race with patience that is set before you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. How can we run the race and strive for the prize if we are weighted down with everything else in life but what God says that we need to carry? We don't want to give up anything that we want to do. Let me say that again. We don't want to give up anything that we want to do so that the work of the Lord will get done. We only want to give God our leftovers. We only want to give God our leftovers. God, I got to do this. I've got to do that. I'll give you time, the little time that I have left. And most times after we finish doing what we want to do, we're tired. And you know what's going to happen. Soon as you start praying, you're going to fall off to sleep. Soon as you start trying to read the Bible, you're going to fall off to sleep. And when you wake up, the Bible is going to be somewhere. Glory to God. Why? Because she did not set priority. Priority, Jesus, you come first. I'm not leaving out this house, God, in the morning until I speak to you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Until I say some words to you, God, I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for waking me up this morning, holding my right mind. And as I get ready to leave home, God, cover me, Lord. Cover my children. Cover my family. Cover the saints of God. Cover my pastor in the name of Jesus, setting priorities. Hallelujah. We only want to give God our leftovers. Hallelujah. God wants our first fruits. And in this first month of January, I want you to know that you got to set your priorities and give God your first fruits, your best times, your best work, and not your leftovers. It's all a matter of setting the right priorities. And let me say this again. Our priority, all of us, should be to have a strong relationship with Christ, strong relationship with God first, then everything else will fall into proper order. Mm -mm. What are your priorities right now? The scripture we read in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, 33 through 34 <clears throat> says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All what things? Earlier up, up in Matthew chapter 6, starting the first one, say, don't you worry about your life. What you're going to eat tomorrow? Mm. Or what you're going to drink? Hallelujah. Is, and he said, is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Many of us, we have planned what our snack is going to be. Tonight, as soon as Bible study is over with. Hallelujah. Say, and don't just like the birds of the air, they don't sow, neither do they reap, but your heavenly father feedeth them. And then that 27 verse say, which of you by taking thought, which of you can wear by wearing, can add one cubit unto your stature? Stop worrying and give it to God. Hallelujah. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things, everything you need will be added to your life. Matthew 6 and chapter, the verses 25 to 34, that sets the foundation for setting your priorities in their proper order and perspective. We are to seek a life that is pleasing to God. If what you are doing doesn't please God, don't do it. Before you do whatever it is, if it does not please a glorify God, I warn you on tonight, don't do it. Put God first, people of God. Seek his will for your life above your own life. God must come first in our lives. I hear you say, no, my family, my husband, my wife, come first. You better put God first. God first then family. Glory to God. God first, then family. God first, then family. Why do God have to take position three, four, and five in our lives? God first. Put God first. He must come first in your life. Seek after the things of God. 
Concern yourself with the things of the spirit. Concern yourself with things that will matter for eternity. Because all these earthly things, hallelujah, all of these influencers with their wrong message, glory to God, trying to divide the body of Christ has to face eternity. When you put God first, everything in life will fall into the right place where it needs to be. So, well, and say, so, well, Pastor, why? Because that's God's promise to you. He promised you in your 33rd verse of Matthew 6. This is what God promised. If you seek me first, if you seek my kingdom first, if you seek my righteousness first, then all everything else that you want will be added unto you. When we put the things of God first in our lives, the other things will fall into proper perspective. As we get ready to pray now, I want you to do a self-examination of yourself. Whether you are proactive when it comes to the things of Christ, or whether you are just reactive, you wait until things happen before you pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us to be in a new year, to see another year. We don't even know, God, if we're going to make it through 2024, but we just want to stop right now and tell you thank you because you allowed us to see another year. And we pray, God, that you will help us to order our lives. Glory to God. Order our lives that in our life will honor you and bring glory to your name. Father, we don't want to bring shame to your name, but we want to bring glory to your name. Help us, oh God. Help us, Lord, to prioritize our time. Help us, Lord, to prioritize our energy. Hallelujah. In a way that we will be faithful to you and faithful to your word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we need your help. We need your help to make it through. We need your help on this year, just as you did on last year. We, God, in the name of Jesus, as of tonight, we put you first in our lives. Glory to God. You are first in our lives. And we thank you, God, for your love. We thank you because your love never failed us. We thank you, God, because you never turned your back on us, God. Lord, we want to tell you thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. People of God, put God first. God must come first in our lives. The things of God must come first in your life. And I promise you, according to the word of God, according to God's word that he said in that 33rd verse, if you seek me first, everything else that you desire in life, whatever your need is, whatever your want is, whether it's the healing of your body, whether it's you will need a better place to live, whether you need a better car, whether you need peace in your home, peace in your marriage. God said, if you seek me first, it all will be added unto you. God bless you, people of God.